We are really excited to show you our new tool that we've been building for you, our stock heat map and our crypto heat map. And as you can see, it's really as easy as going up to the screeners tab and then selecting stock or crypto and it will instantly load on your screen. Now what you have in front of you, if you see our mouse here, what we're looking at is a bird's eye view of the entire market. In this case, we have a high level view of the S&P 500. So the stock market heat map can be a great way to see what is the market doing on a given day. Not so much by the index by itself. So many people will just chart the S&P 500. But now you see every component of the S&P 500 on one screen. And you can even see that it's broken down by each sector. So you have electronic technology here, retail trade, consumer services, health services. It's all broken down just like that. And remember, this tool also works for cryptocurrencies. So if you're watching this as a stock market investor or a crypto trader, or maybe you do both, keep in mind that a lot of the concepts and tools that we're going to show you works the same on the crypto heat map as it does on the stock market heat map and vice versa. Now let's start though with the stock market heat map. So you can see here that we have these, uh, you know, these big red squares or green squares. And what they're showing you is the performance of a company or if we were, if we were on the crypto heat map, the performance of a coin. Now the size of each square is currently sized based on the company's market cap. The sheer size of the company determines how big each square is. So a company like, let's look around here, a company like Exxon is going to be this large of a square because its market cap is 268 billion. If you look at the bottom of our screen, you can see that this pop-up appears. You'll watch it pop up right here when we hover over Exxon pops up 268 billion but Apple is going to be larger than this Exxon square because Apple is much bigger it's 2.45 trillion Exxon is 268 billion Apple has a market cap of 2.45 trillion so the larger the square the larger the company and the reason why that's important on a heat map like this is because you want to know what the largest companies in the index are doing. The largest companies can sometimes sway the index a little more than the smaller companies. Or the companies are as large as they are because they've been executing. People are interested. People are following those companies. So the size of each symbol is sort of a reflection of the company's success to some degree. And that means it is larger on the heat map. Now you'll notice that some squares actually do not show a symbol and that's just because the squares are so small it just would not be easy to see. So what you can do is move your mouse on that square and you can find out by watching the pop-up at the bottom. So for example, this square, there's a pop-up MTB. This square, pop-up DLR. We could go over here, DLTR, Dollar Tree, or here. AAPA, AAP, Advanced Auto Parts, you get the idea. So that is the basics of the heat map and how to visualize it. Now let's talk about some of the unique features that are available to you as an investor or trader or someone having fun following the markets. First of all, you can click symbol list here and you can adjust your heat map depending on where you are in the world or what you want to look at. USA, you can select NASDAQ 100, and now we have a heat map for the NASDAQ 100. We could click all U.S. companies, and that is going to combine every company in the U.S. market onto one heat map. And if you noticed, that took a long time to generate. Well, keep in mind, there's over 3,000 companies in U.S. markets, and you can see how tiny the market cap gets here. These are the smallest squares and they are being generated just to show you that this is every single company in the market, bird's eye view, all on one heat map. Now, if you were in Germany, you could click the DAX. 
If you're in India, you could click all Indian companies. And when you click all companies, keep in mind that's a pretty big list of companies, so it might take a second or two to load. Italy, all Italian companies. Russia, you could do all Russian companies as well as various other indexes. Turkey, you could do all Turkish companies as well as various indexes. And then the UK, the UK 100 or all UK companies. Let's click the UK 100. This is the UK 100 index on a heat map. So now if you're sitting in New York City and you're curious about the UK 100, you could very easily open up this heat map, select the UK 100, and it's right in front of you. So there's really not many better ways to visualize what the components, what the companies of a market are doing than the heat map. More importantly, you can do it globally, so you can get a global view of what's happening. Let's go back to the S&P 500, and we want to walk you through a few more features. Remember, all of the tools that we're showing you work the same on the crypto heat map. So for example, we're going to show you this market cap tool, the performance tool, as well as some of these other features. And just remember that as you switch between the two heat maps, they work in a similar fashion. Okay, this market cap button here, this is how you're going to size each square on the heat map. Remember, each square here is being currently calculated by market cap. We're looking at the largest companies. We want them to have the largest presence on this heat map. But if we click this drop down, we can start to have some fun and explore some pretty unique things here. We could do number of employees. So now we're looking at the heat map based on the sheer number of employees that a company hires. This is no longer just about market cap. So remember when we click market cap, we see Apple and Microsoft and Google. This is about number of employees. How many employees does a company have? You can see Walmart and Amazon really do lead the way as well as Home Depot and Lowe's. And then here's Starbucks and Disney. It's just a different way to visualize what's happening in markets. And it might just show you a unique way to think about what companies might really matter or even just what's happening beyond more traditional ways of viewing this like market cap. So you can click any of these dividend yield percentage, price to earnings ratio. So if you wanted to see it by price to earnings ratio or price to sales ratio, all of these are available to you. You could even sort by volume. Now, volume's uh, very important in the crypto market because sometimes volume is your gauge for interest. It's sort of the gauge for what are people trading on a given day. So rather than sorting by market cap, you can click this drop down and sort by traded volume. And now you can see what has been traded the most on a specific day. Pretty cool if you're looking for trading action. Traders may find this especially helpful. Now we go back to the stock market heat map. And now that we've walked you through these different sorting options, keep in mind this is what you're sizing each company by or each square or rectangle that they represent. The next thing we want to show you is the performance. This is where you are going to be able to do different time frame analysis across the world, bird's eye view, every single company on one heat map. Right now we have performance daily percentage. So this heat map is showing us the percentage change of various companies on a daily basis. Apple currently is down minus 0.23%. Amazon is currently down 0.93% for the day. This, this D is going to be day. But if we click this drop down, we can actually sort by hourly. You can see it goes to gray because it's clearly a fairly flat day in over the last hour. There's been no action over the last hour. Gray, as you can see here, means 0%. But let's go to year to date. Now, this is probably one of uh, uh, the most popular ways to use the heat map tool when you're looking for general sentiment of a market. 
you can go back in time and look at a longer time frame. As you know, most traders, most investors, we like to track things daily. So we'll look at a daily chart. We might even go to the four hour if we're looking for action. We could go to the one hour. But remember how important it is to zoom out and look back over time. So for example, we just clicked yearly. Y means yearly. So now what we're doing is we've created the heat map to show us all of the companies in the S&P 500 and their performance over the last year. Size it by market cap. Now what we can really see is, wow, these large cap tech stocks have been performing incredibly well. Almost everything is green. One of the uh, sectors that is the most green is this electronic technology sector. And what's also interesting is we can now spot some red because this could be used to find a trade. Verizon's down. Verizon's red. at and down. It's red. What could be happening in the communication sector? Now we can begin our research process. We can click Verizon and we'll have this chart for us. We can see a more advanced chart. It has the red background to demonstrate the, the color that, it, that we clicked into. And you can just get a quick profile of the company as well. And keep in mind, year to date is another popular way to measure companies. So you can look at what are the best performing companies year to date. Then you could do say, you could do say volume. So volume by by month. And now you can see a percent. You want to now you're looking at the company's year to date percentage gain or loss sorted by volume. So you're looking at the most traded stocks of the year and their percentage gain. And now this is going to unlock some serious insights. Why is this going to unlock some serious insights? Because volume will show you where the price action is, who's trading and buying, uh, whether it's retail traders, pro traders, hedge funds, quants. When there's a ton of trading volume, there's clearly some action there. And take a look at the energy sector, 90% year to date, MRO 144% year to date. This is, you would sometimes miss these if you only sorted by market cap because they are smaller companies. They're not as large as Apple and their market cap is so small. This is, here it is, that you won't be able to uh, spot this as as easily. So as a, as a really unique tip is zoom out. Go to year to date, six months, even three months, and then have some fun sorting or creating a heat map by different uh, different uh, uh, things other than market cap. So, for example, go ahead and use volume. It could be weekly or daily or monthly, and now you can start to see these tradable moves pop out to you. You can see here how much smaller Microsoft is, for example. Even Apple has a smaller square here. But you may not have noticed that CCL now is, is quite large. That's because there's a ton of trading volume there. Even Ford, there's been a ton, a ton of trading volume. More trading volume on Ford than on Tesla, as an example. Okay, let's reset this chart back to daily. Let's go back to daily percentage change. And we'll just walk you through the other tools available to you. Remember, everything we showed you here can be done on the crypto heat map as well. So sector, this is how you can ungroup or group things. So this is a heat map without any groupings. The grouping is quite useful because it, it's a little um, easier to see. It breaks up the uh, market in terms of the specific sector that a company is working in. And that just makes uh, everything easier to visualize. You can dive in now quite a bit more. Next up is the mono size. So you can choose to make the size of the heat map either dependent on, on each uh, market cap and sector or the performance, or you can toggle mono size to make everything a little more uh, 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 equal in terms of its sizing. Next up are filters. Filters are a really powerful tool for your heat map because this is where you can start to filter things out. This is where you can start to make a heat map that fits your specific 
requirements. So as an example, well, let us just show you what we just did here. Were you paying attention at what we just did? Let us walk you through that again. You'll notice you don't see Apple anymore or Microsoft or any other large cap companies. Why is that? Well, if you click filter, what you can do is create a heat map based on the parameters of your choice. So let's say you don't want to see the large cap companies. You're not interested in trading Apple or Microsoft. You want to find something hidden, unique, interesting, or just want to maybe even explore what's going on beyond large caps. You want to look at what the small and medium cap companies are doing. Well, in this example of market cap, you could drag the slider all the way down to here. Now you see 5.8 billion to 999 billion. You could even adjust for number of employees or dividend yield or price to earnings or price to sales. For example, maybe we want to see companies with a low price to sales. So we could go all the way down into, let's just say 10. We're not saying 10 is a low price to sales, but it's much lower than 160. So let's go to 10. So now we are filtering our heat map for market cap to be between this range. Every company that you're about to see will be between 5.8 billion and 999 billion. And within those companies, they will have a price to sales ratio between 0 and 10. We click OK. Now we've created our own little custom heat map here based on a filter of our choice. And what we've done is we've just removed some of the things we don't care about. In this example, just pretend we we're not interested in trading Apple or Microsoft. We're interested in finding some sort of other opportunity or trade idea that takes a little more research. We create this custom filter, and now we're ready to go. We can zoom in from here. We can sort by volume. We can sort by market cap, uh, anything of our choice. And it's also interesting to see that when you filter the heat map on your sp specific parameters, and then even sort by market cap or another metric, you'll just notice how quickly everything changes. In this example, we removed the largest companies in the world. We removed Apple and Amazon and Tesla because we shrunk it down only to 999 billion. Apple has a market cap of 2.4 trillion, so it will not show up on this heat map. But the point is, is we've removed those companies and now we're left with a more, uh, in this example, unique, perhaps interesting, uh, uh, un undercovered list of assets that we can look into. Okay, let's um, reset this. So we're going to reset this. We're just going to drag these sliders back up. Keep in mind, all of these sliders work the same. Price to earnings ratio, you could just do, say, I don't know, let's say 42. Price to earnings ratio, 42. Here's a heat map of all the companies with a price to earnings ratio between 0 and 42. Anyways, let's drag this back up to reset it. We click OK. Here's our heat map. Next up is settings. So you can control the style settings. In true trading view fashion, you can control the look and feel of your heat map. It's just like if you were on the chart or anywhere else, you have full control and customizations over everything. So if you uncheck title, you'll see now it's just logos. You can also do description, so it would be uh, Microsoft Corporation. It will be written out in the full company name or symbol, MSFT. Uncheck logo. Now there's no logos. Check logo. There's your logo. Your first value is going to be the value that you've selected. We have performance, day percentage. So you can uncheck this to not show it. See that? You don't see the percentage change anymore. But you probably want to keep this checked because the point of looking at this is to get a feel for what's happening. What is the what is going on in markets? Are they is, is are they up big or down down big? You can also add price. So you can see price here. Click this drop down. You could do market cap. Sometimes that's a nice way to visualize as well. But we'll uncheck this. We're going to keep this on, on the default settings. We just wanted to show you this to remind you that. In true trading view fashion, you can customize the look and feel of your heat map. And we're really only just getting started. If hopefully you've stuck around this whole time. We have, we have a few more tools to show you. You can save the chart as an image and then go share it on your blog, on Twitter, on your website, with friends, with your groups in Discord, Telegram, wherever it is that you hang out. Just click Save Image and it'll save. You can also click Copy Link. 
and it will copy a link to this heat map that you can then share with friends. So let's say this is our heat map that we just created. We've made some customizations to it. We're doing volume. We are also doing year to date. We've also reduced the market cap way down. Well, now if we click copy link and send this to a friend, they will be directed to this exact heat map. It will look just like this to them. So you can create a custom heat map and then send it to them, whoever it is, friends, family, coworkers, and they can see what you see or what you're working on or looking at. Lastly is the heat multiplier or one way to think of it is the intensity of the move. So this is an important thing. We probably should have gotten to this earlier, but it will help you understand it a little more. The heat multiplier essentially is the uh, color code. Minus 3% is this bright red. Minus 2% is this sort of uh, medium red. Minus 1% darker red. 0% is gray, so that's American Airlines, all these others. Up 1% or more, this dark green. 2% lighter green, 3% very light green. So that's how you can start to see what's performing well. You can see 3.5%, 3%. If you click the heat multiplier, you have full control over the color coordination. How intense do you want this heat map to be? How much red and green do you want to see or emphasize? It's going to depend on your time frame. This is the default, just one. Each 1% move is a different shade of green or red. But if you click the drop down, you can, you can make it really intense. In this case, you can see here, each 0.1% is a darker, or is a, another shade of green or red. 0.1%. You probably want to use something like this on an hourly chart, and even then it doesn't show the full extent of the move. Here you go. This is a hourly, this is a four hour chart, four hour performance chart. So it's measuring the performance over the last four hours of every symbol. And now let's shrink our heat multiplier. Because over the last four hours, look at all the gray. There, there's, there's not many big moves at all. So we're going to shrink this multiplier to say, you know what? Show us the biggest moves between Point three, negative 0.3% and positive 0.3%. Now look at the difference. Now we can spot all of the action on a more granular level. This would probably be good for those who are day trading, looking for action right now, who really want to zoom in. The alternative is you go to, say, a year to date. You click this, and you'd probably want to zoom out more and probably do a, a larger number, like every 5% intervals. Or perhaps in this case, it looks like we should go to 30%. There we go. You can see the colors changing. Now, really bright green means up 30% or more, 20%, 10%. You get the idea. You This heat multiplier is how you change the intensity of the color code on the map depending on the percentage move or percentage change of whatever it is that you're measuring. We hope that this video helps you get started with the heat map. And as you know, it's right up here, screeners, select stock heat map or crypto heat map. One thing we really want to just emphasize is the crypto heat map works the same way as the stock market heat map. Everything we just showed you, mono mode or even the filters to say, go down by market cap, for example, are all very similar. And if you happen to be a crypto trader watching this video, just know that you can use some of the tips, tutorial strategies that we just showed you on your crypto heat map as well. Even save the image, copy a link, change in your heat multiplier. It's all possible and it follows a similar rhythm. You may notice that there are some slight features that are different. For example, you can click crypto and USD and rather than seeing it by country, remember in, on the stock heat map, you could sort by country of stocks. In the crypto heat map, you actually sort by the coin or how you want the, each cryptocurrency be to be displayed in dollars. How about priced in Bitcoin? Now you have a heat map that's 
every cryptocurrency price and heat map. Or for example, decentralized finance. This is going to show you a decentralized finance cryptocurrency heat map. So we hope that this video helped. As always, leave your questions and comments below. Our goal was to dive into our new product that's available to all users starting today. It's free. This video should make it easier to use for you. Copy a link, have some fun, share an image, and we hope that you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching.